Uh, AT and T sell them here. Uh, they s do sell them at Yes Computer, mm -hmm. and you can get them at the Hoyt Mall or their Apple Store. You have to decide. So how about the Apple Store down here on that's, Pleasant Street? Well, that's, that's he's a Apple affiliate, but he's an Apple. Affiliate. That's yes, he will. Hi. 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 Okay. I guess you wonder okay. why I've called you all here. <laughs> 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 We're gonna it is a little lopsided. And um, I want to thank you, Heidi, for being here again. And um, I just wanted to let you know that this meeting is being recorded in video. Um, the North Street Association, Adam Cohen, has Ruth doing a lot of videoing on meetings throughout the city. And you know Peg Keller? Yeah. Right, our housing and community development um, planner. And we have Carol Reinhardt, who's chair of the Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. And our council president, councilor at large, who is it? Bill Dwight. <laughs> oh. And we have our council from Ward 7, Eugene Tacey, and I, city councilor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6. So, Heidi, because we have you here every year, we know quite a bit about your program. Could you give us in detail the success that you are having with what we have given you mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. okay, and what is coming forth that's new in your program, and have you had some problems? Okay. Okay. I, thank you for letting me start above the ground yes. and the floor. <laughs> um, let's see. From the support in the city, we've been able to offer not just level services and, you know, this um, kind of sustaining level of what we've been giving out all, uh, all along. But we actually have been able to increase the amount of food that we gave out that we, over what we used to give out um, since we rebuilt the building. And that has continued to ramp up each year. Um, it's through efficiencies. It's through our partnership with the Food Bank of Western Mass um, and, you know, just careful purchasing. Um, and working on a lot of collaborations with area farmers, local growers, and um, just basically every place you could imagine that has food that might be willing to partner with us, we've been able to uh, explore more and more of that. Um, that's particularly good news for us, in this, or a real success for us this last year, because um, what we found is that most every other pantry throughout Massachusetts, and I think even across the country, were, finding, were um, giving out less food. They had less available through um, their local food banks, the government programs, USDA, MEFAB, those kinds of things uh, were cutting back, and so access to reduced price food was diminishing, and therefore most pantries, what they gave out was diminishing. Um, I think the average in the area was about 18% less among area food pantries uh, than over the year before, whereas we were able to increase by, I think it was about 11 or 12%. So that uh, represents a great success for us, and it's partly because of, you know, sustainable funding that we can count on, and that we can look to, to the whole year to know, um, you know, that we're what, what our buying power is going to be. Um, so that was wonderful, and we appreciate it. Um, and this coming year, a couple of new exciting things that we're um, really happy to announce, uh, brand new news, is that we've just become a local hero through the CESA Local Hero Program. Um, and that's on the strength of some partnerships that we've developed, including um, offering a winter share, a winter market with Enterprise Farm from our location, um, so that people who really care about fresh local food for themselves can come and buy it, and it su helps subsidize local shares for our clients as well. Um, and also, we have a fresh dairy program that we've just received a three-year commitment from an anonymous family foundation um, to fully fund that program three years which means that um, in the past we had a, our dairy program was, ooh, Jean, you're very good. Brand new ball. And yeah. reliquism and, our, and harmonica <laughs> at the same time. Um, in the past we've, we've given out, uh, when, we, when we've offered dairy to our clients, it's often been um, powdered milk. And it's been the one area that I've always felt like that we're really not doing our best in, in this. Partly because my father tried to make me drink powdered milk and my brothers, because on the shrimp of the family, we went through a lot of milk, you know. And, um, and I hated it. I couldn't stand it. And it really kind of bothered me that we're always offering powdered milk to our clients. And 
Then it, what bothered me even more was the fact that we really weren't having to spend very much money on it because people wouldn't take it. So, you know, we'd have a dairy program and we'd say, yeah, everybody can take home this much uh, powdered milk, but in fact, it didn't cost us that much because they just left it on the shelves and Is it just didn't feel good. It was kind of screwed up on my thing, right? Was there any permitting that you had to do to have carry the dairy and things such as that? Permitting? Yeah, any from the Board of Health or anything like that? I'm just asking. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, I mean, we refrigerate it. Yeah. Um, just checking. I just see the Board of Health. I see the Board of Health and all, the convenience stores, and they're always checking the coolers. I'm just. Oh. Constantly. I mean, they're always there. In terms of our coolers, we yeah. definitely have to keep um, a weekly check on the on the temperature gauges. We, they get inspected. I mean, that um, we have lots of food in the coolers. It's not just dairy. So we have meats and everything. And yes, they're definitely compliant, and we keep we keep good chat tabs on that. Um, but the dairy itself, unless there's something I don't know about. Yeah, I didn't know. Just I see communities that carry dairy and don't carry anything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just, I mean, I'm just curious. So, um, so what my fond hope was all this time was that we would be able to offer fresh milk at some point. And knowing that we're in this agricultural area where dairy farmers are, you know, always sort of struggling and needing um, their revenues to be consistent and so forth, it felt to me like we really should have a partnership with a local dairy. And we did. Um, do an experimental program last summer with our family farms, local um, consortium of dairy uh, farmers, and that was wildly successful. We did that through our kids' summer food program. The kids were crazy about it, and I think I saw that they were taking more cereal as a result of having the fresh milk, so that made me think they're having cereal for breakfast instead of Pop-Tarts, so that's all good. Um, so anyway, we got a $25,000 grant, a year grant for three years. Uh, to provide fresh dairy across the board to all of our clients. Is um, that through our family farm? And we'll be buying it through our family farm, so wow. it's a really good deal. Um, we've become now like a significant enough customer that they're going to deliver it to us on our time frame. We don't have to, you know, get there oh. at 7 o'clock in the morning and pick it up. It's really, it's a win-win-win. Um, our clients are thrilled. And the other part of that is, um, in tandem with not feeling great about the powdered milk, we also, we're giving out a lot of juice. and. I mean, my growing awareness over the last five, nine years is that maybe some families are relying too much on juice and the calories and the, the sugariness of that to fill up their kids, and it's not the most healthful thing. Um, which, when we get donations of juice or we get to buy it very cheaply through the food bank, that's one thing, and we want to be able to offer it. But um, when we got to the point where we didn't actually have enough juice coming to us through the food bank, we didn't really feel great about going to the store and buying it with our, you know, with our retail dollars. So oh, what we're doing here with the, with the dairy is we're actually letting people make that choice. If we have juice and they want it, fine. But if they'd rather have dairy, they can switch their juice to dairy. And so it's just getting even more milk so out So many people now who are apparently having problems and they're into this gluten-free. Mm -hmm. Are you running into this? We definitely are hearing that from people. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a little bit of a challenge for us to help identify what's medically necessary and what is just kind of like that's the latest thing that people are trying um, because we can't keep enough gluten-free product to be able to offer to anybody who wants to have gluten-free all the time. In a nutshell, what's gluten-free? Wheat, uh, free essentially wheat is for people, uh, yeah. people who have digestive problems. Exactly, they get really Ill. European heritage, but there's also there's a trend, there's a food fashion of sorts that believes that Wheat, the presence of wheat, gluten from wheat is pernicious in diets. So you'll see a lot of restaurants offer gluten free items mm -hmm. made with rice flour or things like that. But and so and certainly, there are people who have like celiac disease, they could right. go into exactly. shock yes, and have you know, a has. medical emergency. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, we, and so, we do try very hard to keep products for them that are kind of stored away separately. So do they have to show you like a medical paper or something? You no, know, you know, we're, we're still in the midst of trying to figure this out. Um, at this point, we're just, we do ask people when they come in, you know, do you have any allergies or preferences we need to know about? And when they say, I'm trying to do gluten-free, we just kind of dig down a little bit. Is it, is it a must? Is it you're trying to just steer away from wheat so that we can prioritize the gluten-free stuff? Now, you're going to be having a nurse coming in, right? We have um, four, uh, nursing students from UMass who are with us every Wednesday for about 10 weeks. Wow. Um, and that's been really popular. 
Mm -hmm. um, they are able to, you know, do simple things like uh, do blood pressure screenings and. Um, when we get like donations of children's aspirin or vitamins or mm -hmm. um, things like that, they can administer them with a little bit of information about what's behind that kind of thinking. Um, we recently had a collection of um, oh, probably 20 cases of dental supplies, toothbrushes, toothpaste floss, mm -hmm. mouthwash, coupons um, from a local practice. And so they've been putting them together in bags and dispensing them with a little bit of information about oral health and overall health. and. Um, it's been great. The reception to them has been wonderful, and I heard a client there the other day saying, "You cured me from last week." I don't know what the circumstances were, but they did, in fact, you know, have one situation where a blood pressure screening um, alerted them to the fact that they needed to call that person's primary care physician and actually divert him over to the hospital right away and stuff. So that yeah. was. Is there lactate or anything like that? We do. We get it. We don't. We don't go out and buy it, but yeah. if we get it, we're happy to get it out. So the dairy program and the and the and the fresh local produce thing, the whole thing together, kind of makes us a local hero. Yeah. Is it be, um, with the dairy program, so it's a spectrum of dairy products or just milk? Um, our purchasing is going to be directed to milk because we do get cheeses, yogurts, cottage cheese, and stuff separately. Separately, like through the food bank, usually. Things like cottage cheese and stuff like that. Okay. So. Yeah. So this will be. Um, we'll be putting all this money toward. Uh, 1% milk, I think, from our family farms to sort of supplement and, as I say, to kind of um, support some of the other dietary choices like cereal that might be better choices than, or, or, or you know, instead of juice. Well, I actually I think the support of local dairy farms, dairy farms are feeling considerable pressure, particularly in this region, so that's yeah. all good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's a very positive thing for our family farms. I, I assume that because of the fact that they've given us such a great deal. Um, I think we're ordering 325 half gallons a week is the rate that we're... Um, yeah, so it's it's not insignificant. Um, and the fact that we can offer that and know that we can do it for three years without sort of, you know, uh, experimenting and pulling it back, which we don't like to do. I need whole milk, I mean. Like, yeah. Rachel, I love milk. Heidi, <laughs> how about like fundraising and operating expenses? And yeah. How are you doing after the big push for the building campaign? Um, yeah, very well. As we were led to believe, um, it kind of was a, an opportunity for people to get a different view of the survival center and to understand that we can make good use of major donations. So a couple of donors really stepped up from being you know, kind of small pocket change donors to being donors that we could look to to say, could you give us $10,000 a year? And they've committed at that level. Um, so, you know, I think that it really did sort of help us to have an ongoing presence mm -hmm. at a different level. And that's why we have continually increased our food budget, um, even when some other things like the struggle of, of you know, government granting uh, is not able to rise up. Those uh, post-capital campaign individual donors are supporting us. Uh, really look good down there. It's thank good. you. Really have you nice. been inside? Yeah. There you have, okay. Yeah, it's good. So your new congressman, by the way, is on the Ag Committee, uh, Jim McGovern, mm -hmm. now also has offices here that yeah. I think that mm -hmm. would certainly be quite impressed by your enterprise and that uh, perhaps there's there's some opportunities there that That's you might be able suggestion. to facilitate. Uh, we'll definitely follow up on that. I heard there was a legislative luncheon at Congregation B'nai Israel last month um, that I went to and I heard that uh, Peter Kokot had received a Dairy Council Award of some sort, I think it was. So I thought, oh, I'm going to let him know about this program too. So I'll, um, I'll be in touch with him. Sure. Because I mean, your catchment is, is very similar to uh, mm -hmm. Congressman McGovern's, and mm -hmm. he's been speaking about this a lot. About um, He's actually featured in the film um, I heard uh, of, uh, what's it, Setting the Table? No, what's it called? It's, is it Hungry for Change? Or No, it's the follow up. Campaign. Something for Change, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But it's mm -hmm. it's the it's about food security in the United States or the absence thereof, and, and, and Jim McGovern's featured in that heavily. And this is an issue that's particularly close to him. So it seems yeah. to me that go down and visit him and invite uh, him over there. I absolutely yeah, right. will. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in town all the time. Actually, yeah. WHMP is considering a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> it's just okay, Congressman. Thanks. Just oh, do you know where he is? He's in the. It's ninety six Pleasant on the first floor of the SRO. Oh, is that right? Yeah, right across from the Chamber of Commerce. Awesome. 
Good. Right across the All street. Right. So, Thank you. So I have just one question. You know, my my uh, desire is to see public transportation coming by your way. Yeah. And I wonder if there's any progress in that that you're aware of. I thought I saw some sign that there was another appeal going out from a group. There was just an article in the paper about yeah. an appeal of that nature in Amherst. Oh, that's right, because I saw it and I thought, oh, fantastic, and then I read, oh. Yeah, no, sometimes they just say <laughs> the right. survival center and it gets you, like, it gets your hopes up. Um, to be honest, it hasn't been something that I've put any time into in the last it's year, but it, it's Community. worth putting time into, and I, it's felt every time we've investigated it, like there's so many players and so many, so much red tape that I thought I could be more effective, like going after this grant for fresh for dairy or whatever. But I don't want to give up on it because it's it's very very important. It's part of a bigger picture. Yeah, um, yeah. I would definitely welcome any insight you all have into collaborations that could move us along in that direction. I don't think the model that the Gazette reported on for Amherst seems like a model that would work for us. That sounded like it was pretty much appealing to the city or the town mm -hmm. to fund mm -hmm. uh, you know, a new route. And it, right. <laughs> unless you tell me otherwise, I don't think that's It's just an obscure route. It's just an obscure, it's out of the way. It, I guess it is. I don't think it would be an. Um, I don't think it would be a route that would. That I, I think it's a route that would make plenty of sense for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a major thoroughfare to head up toward Florence and. I think Why? The hospital. Could, yeah, I think it yeah. could do very well. Um, but I'm not an expert on the transportation side of things. Talk to McGovern. Yeah, right. Why should that's talk to P Peter. PVPA? That would I be think that's right. Different. Yeah. Different. And they're struggling, and, and, and they've got their own struggles right now too. Well, they do, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if any of you have friends on the PVP that you could <laughs> say, like, hey, talk to so and so. So, uh, so um, actually, the the landscape changed when I walked on the door today. This is kind of exciting, but yes. the um, traditionally the request is about one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars. And up until like 20 minutes ago, <laughs> we only had 79,000 to, to, to spend. Yeah. Um, we were looking at possibly level funding or underfunding people, but it, and, and the big concern, of course, was people interpreting the reduce award as being some type of reflection of a diminished esteem or 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 value that we hold. For the programs that we're funding, and and so I'm expressing this caveat. Although we did we did scare up eleven thousand dollars, almost twelve thousand dollars more. Just Peg and Cam just came up with that in the little bit of code. All right. So that's nice. that that program actually program income that we yeah. realized we could add to the total. So as we, I mean, it it makes it a little less painful, mm -hmm. but there's no. I mean, there's. I mean, you know, each year, of course, we like to award much more in each instance, but so we don't know. But that's the caveat. That's yeah. given, given, and and the thing that I've been offering, and I'm not speaking for the committee, but I I don't think the committee would disagree for the most part. But that um, if we can offer any reinforcement, because we recognize that this money is often used as uh, leverage for other grants and funds, mm -hmm. and anything that might come in the form of uh, a letter of endorsement or some, you know, something from this committee expressing our our sense of how much we value the programs that sure. we've offered. You know, it's not money, but it's... It's it like is, in the nonprofit world when you give people a really nice title because you can't give them a great salary. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly right. Yeah. And nothing like a municipal government could nonprofit that doesn't have 501c3 status. So... Exactly. so but that, I mean, so yeah, we've been saying this to all the applicants just to... Uh, let you know Thank how the, the, the way of the land is important. Yeah, I mean, I, I, in the absence of you telling me, like, bad job, I, I figure, um, you know, unless I hear that the pool of money that you were working with expanded greatly and our <laughs> award is reduced, yes. I'm not going to panic over it being, <laughs> you know, that problem. Thank you. Well, it's important. Yeah. Can you touch on your collaboration with Bacon? Yeah. And I'm kind of, I, I always find that. Not odd, I mean, I just find it, when I read it in here, 
It's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it, it was from the initiative of Dakin, so I give them all the credit. Um, but they came to us to say, we they have a mission of ending animal homeless, homelessness in their catchment area by some year. And what they've identified um, to be the animals that are most at risk for homelessness are cats and pit bulls. And um, so the things that they, they, they went out and secured a grant to offer us free food for dogs and cats. And, and that's a little bit of an enticement to clients to then reach out to Dakin. And along with that, um, vouchers for free spay and neutering of cats and pit bulls. So, and they even can have a program that can help with transportation or like arranging to pick up an animal, I think. So basically, you know, it's very common for our clients, particularly like if they're living in one of the housing, uh, housing projects in town, that they kind-heartedly, you know, notice that there's these stray cats and kittens, and they take them in, mm -hmm. and then there's an inevitable litter that comes after that, and then now they're feeding you know, six or eight little mouths, and it's coming directly out of our clients' own food supply, which we all know by definition is is, yeah. is not what it needs to be. So they came to you. They came to us, and they said, "We're going to give you," and they bring it to us every week. Um, enough cat and dog food for every client that has cats and dogs and these vouchers. But that and doesn't have to be for low-income families? Oh yeah, do, I mean, yeah. every okay. family who comes to us is low-income. Okay. So it's only for our clients. Okay. Um, so there's no extra burden on our part other than the question of, oh, by the way, do you have any cats or dogs? Oh, two cats? Okay. It's written on a slip. Done. And there's a little corner of the room as they leave the building that's, a, you know, two cats? Okay, here's your allotment. And, and when did this start? Um, I think it's been going on for about two and a half years, oh. maybe three. I don't remember hearing that. Time. No, I, don't, I, I remember it from last year. That's why I, was, that's why I asked why yeah. I run it again. Yeah. 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 I may not have written about it in the, in the first year because um, some partnerships like that, you just you want to make sure they're going to pan out yeah. for you. Hmm. Thank you. Um, proclaim them. But yeah, it's been working out really, really well. And it's, as hmm. I say, it's no, um, there's no difficulty on our end, and our clients are really, really happy about it. And we hear little stories like, you know, one time a woman got cat food when it, early when it started. She said, oh, I can't believe I'm getting cat food. Um, this year, when you give me my $10 Stop and Shop gift card for Thanksgiving, I'll be able to spend it on turkey because in the past I've spent it on my cat. Um, well, you know, I mean, that's sweet. And now I know some people, I don't think any of us at these tables would argue, but some people would argue, well, maybe if they're having trouble feeding themselves, they shouldn't take in other, you know, beings. They shouldn't be... Uh, taking on the burden of feeding a kitten as well. Well, we all need love. We all need companionship. You know, I don't want to say that my clients, because they don't have enough money to have a, a lovely meal, uh, should then be deprived of every other aspect of full human experience. So. Everybody's right to have a dog or a cat. I've always had dogs and cats. <laughs> they're important to you, probably, if you have. And, yes, and making sure that they don't suffer and that they're well fed and cared for is as important members. to you as, as your children. And household. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you guys are uh, becoming a full-service center for between <laughs> blood pressure <laughs> checks, uh, dental hygiene, uh, dairy food products, and, and uh, I actually think that's brilliant. I think that, that it's the one resource point, particularly if, if you're coming by public transportation, you can't be bopping all over hell and begone to try and get the things you need to sustain life. The fact that the, the Plus, you're also a critical contact point for people for wellness checks for things like doing blood pressure, where yeah. they might not be going out and trying to find out what their health issues may or may not be. I think that's. I think that's exactly right. People, I mean, if people need help, the one thing they're not going to forego is eating. So we find that among the social services that refer one, you know, to one another, that we're the one that's sort of the most trusted and the most likely to be involved in any. Is that going to stay like that with the volunteers of nursing coming in? I would love to see it be continuing. I don't. Their commitment is only through May first, so okay. we'll save you on that. Well, you're happily named the Survival Center. Yeah. All about survival. Well, and I don't know if you know this, but a few years ago we looked closely into changing our name. We felt that the Northampton Survival Center was wrong in three respects: that it's not because just it's Northampton. Not exactly where that it's uh, not just a center, we have actually a location in, in Goshen, yeah. and that survival was disrespectful to our clients and perhaps you know alarming and all these other things. And we surveyed our clients, among others, on how the 
language was working, and our clients were the most resoundingly endorsing of the language. Said, we're so glad you used that word because that's what this place means to us, and we don't want it to be prettied up or undersold. It is yeah. about survival. And don't ever lose the carrot. Thank you. Yes, I like, you <laughs> like your brain, but now it's a little beacon of hope. Beacon of hope. <laughs> beacon carrot. Um, any other questions? Thank you very much. For Thank having you me. very much. Talk to you again yeah. for your support. I, I did try to address your your statement in my cover letter to say I know it's a tough tough year and. And we don't feel slighted. Thank, well, thank, thank you. Thank you, for thank you very much for work and thank you. all your volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Many of them. Has everybody been huh, to the new I, building? I, I've actually been, in, I've been, been in outside, it. not inside. I, you, I've you, been in it. I actually, I almost got kidnapped twice for tours by Heidi personally, I think. And I was when you were doing the fundraiser factor. Have you? I'm sort of close to, I've been on inside the door, but yeah. not all the way in. Well, so the privacy, the little cubby the little, for the intakes and stuff like that is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know, I think we say this every year. I, I have to yeah. go to monitor. I live, I live in a walking distance. All right, well, let's oh. go. <laughs> it's really <laughs> good. Plus, we have a very nice conference room, so if you ever need a different space. Well, there's a thought. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there you conference. go. There's a thought. <clears throat> Yeah, but we wouldn't listen to that damn fire alarm. Oh, all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no elevator necessary, so it's actually the last time I saw it. Thanks again. Thank you, Heidi. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cold as snow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fair yeah. housing. That they had dog and cat food and stuff. I had no idea. I had some. It's amazing. I don't remember that being mentioned. No. You know, I've been looking year. for a dog, and it's like everything in a shelter is, is a pit bull. Yeah. It's like there's, really? there's got to be a reason for that. Well, there's yeah. a reason. Hey, hey. Hey. All these guys get them as nutrients, and then they ditch them. Hey, everybody. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sit here, you guys. Sit at the, sit at the table. Have seats. Make yourselves comfortable. So, um, in the interest of full disclosure, I've already had a I've had a meeting with Judith already this morning or this afternoon, and I am participating in a fundraiser for the literacy project. I think it's important that I mention that as we're talking and reviewing this. But mm -hmm. um, well, can we tell them why? Because I think Joyce and Fred would like to know. Uh, the a year you know, ago, yeah. a year ago we had the same kind of meeting, and uh, Judith brought in some students who had done the GED. And they they were nervous, and I, by way of saying don't be nervous, I, I pointed out I don't have a high school diploma. I didn't have a high school diploma until September. She made me take the GED. <laughs> Who did? Judith. Well, he said he said I never graduated high school. Yeah. Really? And he's the president it, of the city council. And see, so, and I thought he did because he was going to university without walls. Yeah, he snuck into the university without walls. Yeah. So, but he, but I said, so the next day I called him, I said, why don't you come over and study with us and get your GED? All right. Well, See? I got it by one question. <laughs> I got one more wrong. Uh, I've been <laughs> sitting here whining. <laughs> Is that true? Let's <laughs> yeah. call them. <laughs> well. I would never make the math. I know well, that. And that's, right where, that's why I got killed on. But that, doing that process made me understand and appreciate what you guys have gone through or going through and why you're doing it. And, you know, I did it without much at stake. I didn't have much at stake when I did it because if I flunked it, I could, we could just say, well, we could have expect much from this <laughs> movie. But there are people who, who take these tests. It means a lot more, a lot more. There's a lot more at stake and a lot more at risk. And, and everyone who sat in that room with me had those stakes. So. You have my undying admiration and respect. So, and and now she's going to raise money off of me. She's using me to publicly humiliate me so she can make money. That's okay, fine. Thank you, Councilor. Um, right now, I'd <laughs> like to um, announce that this uh, meeting is being videoed and taped by the North Street Association. And it's Ruth That's McGrath me. who is doing the videoing. Okay. And if you could just, we could start with him and give his name okay. and her name. 
Would we be able to get a copy of the video? Uh, it'll be. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It'll be up on the internet on YouTube.com. Okay. If you go and search under North Street Association. I'll give you my card. Maybe oh sure. Okay. I'll email it to you. Okay. So you guys will be famous. Okay. Yeah, for, okay. So the three people <laughs> watching these. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm Judith Roberts, and I'm the director of the Literacy Project, and we run the Northampton Center. And these are two of our wonderful students, Thank you. Fred and Joyce. And I thought maybe I would tell just a tiny bit about the Literacy Project, although most <coughs> everybody here knows. And, uh, and then Fred and Joyce could just talk a little bit about their experience of coming to the program. OK, what I'd like to do is introduce Pat Keller, who you know, and we have Carol Reinhardt, who's the chair of the Human Rights Commission, hey, and to my left, yes, Counselor at Large, Bill Dwight, Hello, officially. and our Council President, and Counselor Eugene Casey from Ward oh, yeah. 7, and mm -hmm. City Counselor Marianne Labarge, Chair of mm -hmm. Social Services and Veterans Affairs. So what I would like from you as the director, um, is to give us as much as you can full details about your program and what success you've had from it, and has there been any problems? Because we've had you in before, right. okay, so we don't want to go through this whole thing. <clears throat> I think if we get right to the main fact here of the program, the success that you've had, or if there's been any problems, or where do you think that you need to go ahead and get more money for to go ahead and improve or expand or whatever? Okay. Um, and I think the two students will can really speak to that as well. But um, last year, with the support from the city of Northampton, we had 57 students enrolled. And 13 of those students moved on after they got their GED and went on to community college. And this is real. Oh, and eight of them got a job, um, or perhaps they already had a job, got a job or a promotion. So, um, and and another neat thing that happened this year in the fall is that because it was an election year. Eight of our students registered and were first-time voters and voted in the fall election. So um, that was a really neat thing. Um, so the success of the program is that we are a GED program, but we come to the town to ask for money for our next step-up transitions because the GED is not the end point. And uh, both Fred and Joyce are going to speak to that, you know, how it affects them personally and that Neither of them see the GED. The GED is a stepping stone. And so once our students get the GED, they really need to move on vocational training, community college. It's different for different people, what they're interested in. Um, and one gentleman who's not here tonight said, I thought he said it really well. This is really what we're looking for. He said, I know there's a gap between what I need to know to get my GED and what I need to know to go to college or get a good job. And this program addresses that. So um, that's really what we are looking for from the town. We've had good success in the past, and we want to build on it. Because I feel really strongly if we just got our students their GED and then said bye, right. and didn't help them to think about and prepare for their next steps, that would be a disservice to them. Because every, you know, we know education opens the doors. So what we're doing for Literacy Project is open the door, and then wonderful people like Joyce and Fred come through, and they do the hard work. They do the hard work. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm happy to answer more questions or talk more, but I've been here for a few years. Yeah, I know. The so, GED. I mean, I have supported this program right from the beginning. Yes, you have. And I always will. Thank and you. I have to say with the GED, I've had residents of my own, which I brought up before, on my ward, 
who had worked in a factory up in East Stanton. And their husbands would come to me and say, Miriam, please try to talk to her into going and getting her GED. At that time, we didn't have it here in North Hampton. Right. So it became very difficult. She had to go to Hoyle Community College, do her traveling, and then go to work on second shift. So it worked out fine. She got her GED, and then she started going to Hoyle Community College. And she's got her associate's degree. So I'm so happy it's in North Hampton. Yeah. Because it's opened the doors for many people now where they don't have to worry about transportation. They can so have it right here in our own city. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So it's Absolutely. open the doors. Thanks. Thanks. I'd, I'd love to hear from Fred and Joyce. So. Yeah. Okay. Ladies first? Or? Ladies first. <laughs> well, as you know, my name is Joyce, and I've been attending the Literacy Project from November 2012 uh, to successfully get my GED. Although I've done other things, I've taken an emergency technician course, I've become a state registered CNA. I wanted to take a registered nursing course. My transcript did not say what it should. I haven't been cheating myself, I, I was going to get to this point in my life sometime. I'm 50 years old, so it's just definitely time. You're still young. <laughs> <laughs> So I have been attending a class, and Michelle is great, Christy is great. Those are two teachers. Yeah, they have um, assistants uh, as well, Sarah and uh, there's another woman there, I don't remember her name. I have broken through, I've, I have a, a math disability, I'll call it. I have overcome this math problem I have from attending Michelle's class. You know, they have one-on-one -on -one twice a week, after hours, after 12.30, one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutoring, as you say, or help with whatever you need. And um, even during the class, if we have eight or nine people, there's always, you know, Michelle or the tutor or the, the assistant is always there to help. Because I'm one of those people that just needed just to go slow. As a matter of fact, I just moved up today to a, I think she called it a 9.10 level, which is good. Um, so it's been very, very helpful to me, and uh, I don't intend on stopping until I successfully get this GED. Uh, I think Friday they're having, you can go to Holyoke Community College to see their, what is it, transfer? Uh, college for a day. College, oh, college for a day, yep. yes, because if I'm still here in Northampton, I, I, I should be. I wouldn't mind going over there to try for the nursing program. So yeah, it's been very helpful. I mean, if you can make it to the classes, uh, you can successfully get the education that you need. And that's what I'm about. It's not so much as a piece of paper that says, hey, I graduated. It's the knowledge is my real reason. That I, it wouldn't be any good if I was just there to get this paper to show someone else. I need to absorb the knowledge that uh, you need to continue on. So I'm, ha I'm happy there. You're working hard at it. I definitely am. I don't do what I should when I get home because I'm always running around doing something else, always cleaning something. But it's in your mind. It's in my mind and I will get You're there. following your path. Yes, I am. Your goal is to go to Hoyle Community College possibly and become and go through the nursing. Yes. And I think you'll do it. Yes, yes, I'm going to try. So I'm, I... I it's a very good program. Thanks. We'll do it. Yeah, thank you. Joyce lives right here on Common Street. Mm -hmm. Thanks. How are you, Fred? I'm good. How are you? Very well. You're an Army veteran? Yes, I am. I'm 25. Um, if I may, I'm, I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say uh, uh, the word that comes to mind for me about literacy project, life change. I have never, I've never had any reason to want anything, but I come from some hard streets, uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, and uh, since, I've, uh, since I've been here, I'm currently a soldier on And uh, coming here, I, I wanted to learn a, a new language. Uh, I, I, I don't want what I have had in the past. Mm -hmm. It is a physical, 
responsibility for me to change that unless I have some education paper behind me. The literacy project provides that for me. That's good. Free of charge. There are, uh, she, she mentioned Christy Michelle, and I have never known people like this. Uh, they both stand right over top of me. And they make sure that I fully understand every aspect of what it is that they're trying to teach me before they move on to the next student and do the same thing. Um, I have always had uh, alternative methods of income. I don't want to live like that anymore. I cannot do it without the literacy project. Um, I have been down to Holyoke Community College. I spoke with Cindy McDonald. She's the veterans rep down there. I have uh, applied uh, for the FAFSA. I filled out the FAFSA application, um, and I was approved for some things. I said life changing because I can see my life changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see me on a job. I, the job that I can see myself on is I'm, I'm looking at a human services certificate program because I'm not the only one. There are so many people who are used to living the way that I used to live that I can help. And uh, the way Michelle and Christy helped me, I mean, they inspired me to want to help somebody else. Uh, nothing short of amazing. Nothing short. And um, this young lady right here, she, uh, she, she, she helps to make it all happen. She comes before you, you people and ask for the money. And uh, so far, you guys have, have blessed her with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking that you continue to do so for my sake and many others. If you would engage the Literacies Project by their success, by uh, the number of people who have moved on, that would be, uh, it would just be an injustice. I would have to ask that you gauge it by the individual success because it is nothing short of life changing for me. And I, I don't want to sound so uh, serious, but it is serious for me. It's all about my life. So thank you for what you have done for those before me, and hopefully you do it for me and those after me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you should know that I, I, I certainly recognize that you are not unique in this respect. No. Uh, someone who has benefited in immeasurable ways, mm -hmm. not, and so it's it's the, the because there's also the aspect of dignity that's being conferred upon people. Absolutely, it's a, I mean, I, I actually I didn't suffer that much, mm -hmm. but it was a, it was a mark of shame walking around without a high school mm -hmm. mom or sure. or something else. Sure. And you know, my career path, such as it is, wasn't really great. So, but. The fact that, as I said, when I sat in the room, just for the other people who were taking the test, the people who have gone through all the classes that you guys have gone through and everything else, and invested the amount of energy and the hope, the prospect of getting that test, it's a huge moment. And it's also pretty daunting. And, and I was nervous, and you know, as I said, I didn't have much at stake. But the, the fact that you guys the difference between a regular high school graduation and what you guys do, kids are in high school, everyone expects them to go through and finish up and everyone celebrates and that's oh, great. But the that's pressure, the kids didn't choose that necessarily. They're doing that for their folks or they're doing that because that's the way the, it's laid out. When folks are doing their GED, they're doing it investing in themselves, people they care about, and the community that they want to be part of. Absolutely. And that makes a huge difference. It does. So, so I, I hope you do know that we recognize, we more than recognize, and are very excited about the value. That and and I do realize that. I just, um, I just, you know, I just, I'll be honest with you, I just have never been, um, I've never had people to care as much as, as, as Christy and Judy and, and Michelle to, 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 about my success in, in whatever it is I endeavor. They, they, they um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's heart touching. They just, they care about how I, how I view uh, myself. 
And uh, if I view myself in a fashion that I want to con uh, uh, con continue my education after the GED project, um, they're, they're, they're more than willing to help with that also. And uh, it's just, uh, it's touching how, how, how much they care. And I'm not used to that. You'll find this entire community had supported like the Literacy Project and the, and the James House and, and everything that went along with it. Um, I'm going to say about 90% um, supported this uh, this whole project, and uh, it's been it's been it's turned out to be a huge asset for the community. I mean, it's tremendous, um, and it's not just Northampton. There's people from all over. And um, do you have enough space there? <laughs> yeah, we love that space. Yeah. It's yeah, nice absolutely. there. Yeah. And we just got yeah. some new chairs from the so. bank donated some chairs. I wanted to say one other quote that I wrote down that um, a young man said. And, you know, I don't really know what his story was, but he, he, he left high school and he said, he said, school didn't work out for me. He said, the teachers were always cracking the whip on me. And that didn't work. He said, now, at the Literacy Project, you don't crack the whip. He said, the motivation comes from inside of me. And I think that's what we're talking about. I think that's, you know, both Joyce and Fred, the motivation is coming from them. And that's such a beautiful thing. I, I, I'm 54, and I had pretty much given up. I, I didn't know uh, what was available. I didn't know how I was to go about um, channeling it. But it's... it's it's the community, as you said, that uh, that, that made me aware. And, uh, I'm, I'm grateful. I also want to thank you for serving our country. Thank you very much. Fred left from his job. We have to get him back. And we, <laughs> Joyce is going to uh, Career Center, so we have both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have questions? I okay. actually do have one thing. I'm going to say that uh, what we've been saying to all the applicants is that, that, first of all, the money that we're granting is Basically, the federal government gives us a certain amount of money, very little money. The federal government does not contribute much to social service programming uh, that comes through the city. So the awards, we have $161,000 in requests, and we have a little over $80,000 to distribute. So, That's tough. and it's been, and this, the, we, we meet every year, and then it, I, I feel like, you know, banging my head against the wall every time we do this because basically what we do is we, we underfund everybody. A little over 90000 A little over, I'm sorry, now over $90,000 because we, they just, they found, they found $11,000, $12,000 I know. So, anyway, so, 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 so the thing is that, that usually, um, uh, and each year they give, the feds give us less and less money. So, but that's just to give you a heads up. I mean, the, and, and, the, and what we want to emphasize is that the award is in no way actually a reflection of our esteem for the programs right. that we're funding. Right. And, and so beyond publicly humiliating myself on stage for you, I will also, you know, we are also offering up letters of endorsement as you use this money to leverage um, uh, um, um, other, other, other funding sources. And also, I would remind you, remember we had a discussion earlier that Congressman Jim McGovern now has an office here. Yeah. Um, I think the easy walk from uh, James House, I think you might. Uh, yes. I think, I think he, he would benefit from a tour of your facilities. Oh, great. great. I'm offering yes, them up right. to everybody. Thank you. So, <laughs> so. And with it, we just received some um, funding from the um, Gazette to teach a computer class. We're going to start it next fall. Oh, really? Excellent. Excited about that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, because everybody wants computer mm -hmm. skills. And yeah. yeah. Are they going to be apples? <laughs> yeah. No, they're yeah. 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 I'm, I'm yeah. very, yeah. very technically yeah. challenged. I have a hard time with my cell phone. Thank you about money. <laughs> me too. Uh, pardon me? Thank you about money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they choose. We, they, um, yeah. It's, they must have got a grant. It's from the New England <laughs> Newspaper Foundation. Uh -huh. It is. It's okay. from the yeah, New, England New, England. New England Newspaper yeah. of New England. Yeah, yeah. Newspapers, newspapers of New England. England. Yeah. Yeah. Way to sniff that one out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Does anyone have other questions for us? I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you and all your employees for such a great job that great you're job. doing for people living here in the city of Northampton. There's one thing that I have a request for, yes. and I've been praying for, is that either Hoyle Community College comes and gives classes there, or if they either bring back 
the LPN course that they used to have at Smith Vocational, oh, yeah. which I brought up before, because I would be very interested. I attended Holyoke Community College, and I'd be very interested in going through a nursing program. Well, yeah. well, Judith isn't really quite in charge of booking. But that's not it, Council. At, at we, you weren't here when we brought this up before yeah. with Judith about bringing in Greenfield Community, Holyoke Community College, and do you know if anything like that well, is... We, are, we had a class in the fall with Greenfield Community College, and um, they seem to be interested in doing more. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, yeah, because... Yeah, we, we need the presence in, in the city. Yes, because I think Council Casey you remember yep. that because yeah. I think you brought up about yeah. was it Westfield? Yeah. Oh. So we're, we my are wife actually went through that Smith School. Right. She got a nursing thirty eight years ago or something. And everybody misses that. Yeah. Okay. Well, keep us in in tune. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, thank you both for sharing your story. Well, yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take it easy. Bye. Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. I'll see you later. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. We're doing the. What we're talking about today. They're giving me. It's basically from the shape of it, but I didn't realize it was going this way. It's going to roast me, Rachel Maddow, and some other people. So, yeah, it's at the Academy. What is that going to be? Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. Hey, hey. Hello, Dana. Danielle, why were you in the paper? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, June second. You're off camera. <laughs> June second, the academy. Make it yourselves comfortable. <laughs> yeah. That's what they were trying to figure out today. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I tried to sit back, so I wouldn't be. No, I'll, I'll, I can shift it. Yeah, it's. I'll just. I'll just that's what we're sure, because I can move. No. So we're last, right? No. 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 Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. No one else is. Yep. Oh my okay, gosh. So everybody's yeah. happy now. There you go. <laughs> I can cover two of them. Well, you're last, and then all we have to do is figure out how to carve up a tiny pie. I thought we had the perfect shelter. These are the same things. Oh, that's right. It yeah. might not be as late as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> we got two of them, Eugene. The Grove Street Inn yep. and the Interface. All at once. Same crew. Okay, I want to open up this meeting and I just want to announce that this meeting is being videoed and, and audioed by the North Street Association by Adam Cohen and this is one of his employees, Ruth McGrath, and you know Peg Keller, yes. right, and do you know Carol Reinhardt yes. from the Human Rights Commission, City mm -hmm. Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6 and the Chair of Social Services and Veterans Affairs and Bill Dwight, <laughs> yeah, our council president and council at large, Councilor Casey from Ward 7. How's it going, kids? How are you? Yeah, very well. <laughs> now, which one do you want to start? Grove Oops. Street Inn? Okay, sounds okay. good. Okay. Danielle. Buffet here. Yeah. Why don't you give out your name so they can be with Sure. Danielle Deberry, director of the Grove Street Inn, as well as the Interfaith Winter Shelter and Service Center. Jay Sicchetti, Vice President of Shelter and Housing, Substance Abuse, Vocational, and Berkshire Services. How's that? <laughs> that doesn't fit my card. <laughs> Wanda, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got five cards. Yeah. Wanda Malone, Director of Shelter and Housing for uh, Hampshire County. And who's your sidekick this year? Abel. <laughs> <laughs> Two years in a row, you know. Yeah, okay, just checking. Thank you very much for being here. What I would, because we have you here every year, yeah. so I would like to know what the success has been with the CDBG money that we do, you know, give you as a uh, reward. And also, do you have any new ideas coming up that you feel will better your programs? And also, have you had any difficulties or any issues that we should know? 
Yeah, well, I can, I can speak to the, um, what we've been doing over the last couple of years in terms of uh, how we view shelter services. Um, we made a, an, a conscious um, decision about two years ago. Uh, we've been working with a um, consultant. Um, his name is Dr. Rafi Bendois. Um, he's been a long time consultant in Western Massachusetts and he works with a model called um, contextual rehabilitation, um, social competency. It's been one that's been around. I've worked with them for over 20 years. Part of what we've done in shelter and housing is not only um, changing how we look at how we do our work, um, but how that is organized in terms of our whole shelter system. So. What we do now, as opposed to having Franklin Services and Hampshire Services, and with the addition three years ago of Substance Abuse Services to ServiceNet from Bay State Franklin, we've um, combined those teams into one team. And what that team, and that gives us um, the expertise in, in the substance abuse beds. Those are 42 recovery home beds of people that are in the beginning stages of um, recovery from substance abuse. Then we have our transitional and permanent housing um, that are scattered sites. There's 70 something sites over Franklin and Hampshire County. And then we have the shelters and all those people and the two resource centers, one here in Northampton and out in Greenfield. And the staff, the team has become one team. So that, and in that team, what they do is they use, they look at all the resources, they try to find the best fit for the transitional or permanent housing, the people that are gonna experience the most success. And the people that are more difficult and need more work, get that focus. So we're moving people along that have a greater chance of success, and we're leaving more resources behind for the people that have a more difficult time and make breaking that cycle of homelessness. So that's benefited, and people can live anywhere. They can choose, if they're in Franklin, they can choose a, a Hampshire County. If they're in Hampshire County, they can choose to move to Franklin. And people do, they, they, they will cross, you know, depending on what their preference is. So um, that's brought a lot more expertise to the table. Dr. Bundois has been great at helping us redefine how the accountability that we have for folks and that it's more of a treatment-oriented model than just a room for a night. And um, we think that that's, that's starting to show up and have some success. So you guys are functioning more as a, well, a holistic concept mm -hmm. um, and regional holistic. Right. And, yep. that, that, and that, that sounds great because it seems that you cut out a lot of the dross of interdepartmental exchanges that mm -hmm. might, mm -hmm. stuff yep. might get lost. Yeah, yeah. So it allows you guys to be more responsive as the circumstances arise and be proactive instead of reactive. Yeah, yeah. we had an issue, um, we had congregate housing up in Greenfield as an example of how this works and we just were struggling with the substance abuse issues there and how we deal with that. The program director of the Beacon House Recovery Homes in Greenfield worked with the program director there, looked at how the program is structured, what can you do, what should you focus on? You know, and we, had a, and we had a large number of people leaving that program. She got involved, she did some work with them, we worked around what, which, what should the rules here be here? What should we be asking people to do and not to do? And after she spent, you know, a couple of visits, um, made an assessment, we restructured the program, and from that point on we had people that have been actually, you know, hanging in, staying for a couple of years, and moving on to permanent housing mm -hmm. and the transition. So that's just one example of how it functions as a team with a different level of expertise. Have you, with your census, have you noticed any variations, changes in the last year or so? The up, down, uh, bigger stressors, lower stressors, something like that? One positive thing that we have noticed in the last year or so with all that Jay had just said, with all of that kind of building in the last year and in, in, in and stabilizing for the next year, we have seen much more success with individuals leaving our shelters into transitional and permanent housing because there is there is that kind of wraparound, there is that more solid support for folks. And there's also been an increase in accountability to clients to their own goals. You know, I mean, we don't have a blueprint for anybody. Sit down, 
you create your blueprint, and then you're accountable to that. And um, with that kind of uh, different different philosophy and case management, we've seen much more successes with people moving on. You know, I've noticed quite a bit of young youths that are on Main Street. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen a significant increase in the... You the haven't seen it at the shelter at all? Not significant in the 24 mm -hmm. and under. It's group. been very difficult. Uh, we are part of the, Danielle and I are part of the uh, Regional Network for Homelessness. There's a youth work group that we're involved in, youth homelessness work group, and they, it's very difficult for them to come in um, because of the difference in age groups that come in. They're adults and then the young, and the, the young kind of stick together. Um, so we're trying, you know, in this in this work group, is really trying to figure out what other resources or what new stuff can come, people can kind of get together and try to figure out for them. So they are definitely being looked at, but it's not something that we see much of. There's, there's a pilot program that's going on um, around Worcester, somewhere was it, and um, and that's what and they're they're focusing on tra what they call transitional youth and unaccompanied youth. Um, they're out there, but they're just. In, in your management information, just how long has that been mandated? Is that that's just recently, isn't it? What the the MIS, the HMIS, the management information system. Oh, oh. oh that, uh, no, it's it's MIS. That for, is it two years or three years or something? It's that much. It's, you, well, it's it's within the um, the continuum of care. It's been about three years that system kicked in, but the statewide, it's been in play for. We've had it for five. Oh, yeah. It's been longer. It feels yeah. like it's been, it's been about five or six. six. Five yeah. or six. It's yeah. mandated by them receiving mm -hmm. McKinney money. Yeah. And along with uh, clients, is there, in that system, is it who they see, and um, or is it just about the client? It's tracking. Is it like just a, is, it, is it merely like tracking people, or is it tracking their, their successes or failures, or whatever you want to call it? Is it tracking? It, 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 it does a little bit of both. I don't, I don't think they've, it's gotten to the, what, the, what they want it to do, the, if somebody shows up at Grove Street and they go into the HMIS system, they want to be able to know if they've been in Worcester or Boston or Springfield. Um, they're getting closer to that. I'm not, it's not quite fleshed out yet. Is it confidential information? Mm -hmm. yes, it is, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I was hoping it would be. Yes. Yeah. But it also gives, you know, we want to get an issue, an idea of what the issue that folks are having. And if they're hopping from one place to the next, it's, that's good information to know. Yeah. Um, but we also have our own, you know, service plan and that, ser that system. So we track um, people who move from shelter to transitional housing. Within certain housing. Yeah. Within certain that's what the government wants to know. How long has somebody been in permanent housing? How long have they been in transitional housing? Um, are they employed? Has their income increased? So we're tracking some things that are very quantifiable, rather, you know, and, um, and that's helpful. But the information that you disseminate, is it names or is it numbers? I know you numbers. have a name numbers. attached numbers. to it. Numbers. It's numbers. Okay. It's just numbers. It's okay. numbers. What we have internally is here's your service plan. We hand it to them. We'll see you next week to talk about this. And okay. they say, hey, how'd you do in the past week on these goals that you set? Rather than us saying, hey, what are you going to do? You hear you're going to do this you're and this. Mm -hmm. You tell us what okay. you need. Yeah. We're going to write it down, and then, then we're going to talk about it. Do you ever it. get, like, a husband and a wife or a child? We don't get children. Yeah. You don't get children. We Not don't. at Grove Street or the Interface. Yeah. No. Um, we get husbands and wives, yes? That's there's a very separate system for families. Um, we do the uh, they come down to the Hampshire County Drop-in Center, the Resource Center, and we'll do referrals from there if a family comes through. And our main referral source is really the BTA. BHCD helps them with getting into uh, shelter if that's what they're needing or whatever else. But we kind of figure out, we'll ask them questions in terms of what they might need and guide them in that direction. Are they separated at when, when they enter the shelter? Husbands and wives, you yes. know, for sleeping right into the air. Yes. Okay. When they come in, we're, they're still treated as individuals. We let yeah. them know, we know you're together, but we have to work with you and we have to work with you separately because we that's what we have. In terms of housing uh, and the uh, partnerships we have are all SROs or efficiencies. So it's really difficult to kind of house a family or couples on our end. There's a whole other end of that, but we let them know we have to work with you as an individual. And, 
yeah. you know, we'll definitely help them look for housing if they're together and they want to do that. But um, and it appears that yeah. most of the, the couples that would come in have an amicable relationship. They're they're getting along. We hope so. <laughs> I'm just curious. You know, I, yeah. I, I can see it going the other way. It could go either oh, way. Yeah. It's a special situation. Yeah, it could go either yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I have two questions. One has to do with, uh, you probably mentioned it here, and I'm not taking it in. Waiting list? Do you have people on a waiting list? And what's that like? Yes. Is that a long list? Or do people get, you know, at never or wait a few days? or? Yep, what? and yep. Yep, and yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, the waiting list for Grove Street, um, I think if I were to kind of just grab a number off the top of my head, there's probably about 20 men and probably about 10 women currently. Now, um, you called four days ago, you called today, but your need is much greater than your need, so you're going to be high. It's not numerical. It's completely needs-based. So I've got somebody who's able to stay with family mm -hmm. and somebody else who's on the street. The person who's able to stay with family has been on the waiting list for three weeks. The person on the street has been on the waiting list for two days. Um, so some people do end up never getting into Grove Street because they're able to use a lot of different resources while they're working towards their next step. And um, other folks, the need is, is much greater. Immediate, more immediacy. So and I, and I that's how it works. When people call, I say the waiting list is yeah. anywhere yeah. from two days to two months long. I mean, it's just completely yeah. variable on their need. People calling themselves. So this is my second question. This is the third. Um, if the um, are people calling themselves yes. or are they getting referrals or both? Most is self referral. Most mm -hmm. is self referral. That may be, that, that one of our human rights commissioners um, is active with the friends of the homeless, mm -hmm. and I certainly see them in action. Mm -hmm. Things. That, like Cathedral tonight or whatever, they're moving and shaking all the time. How do they relate to what you are offering and what do you see of them? Friends of the Homeless is a solid, strong force in collaboration with the Interfaith Winter Shelter. Um, with Grove Street, um, they are another solid collaborative force um, when it comes to um, Sometimes uh, want of re rental assistance on an occasion mm -hmm. with folks, yeah. um, helping people kind of more. With Grove Street, it's um, more along the lines of financial assistance to the level that they can. You know, somebody found a place, first month insecurity, they don't have the 1100 but they have 900 mm -hmm. So we may um, ask the friends for, mm -hmm. for help with that. And, um, so, and, and my takeaway from this is that you guys have actually much, have improved transitional issues, allowing, uh, creating more security for for the people who are using your services. Whereas, with the with this kind of the coalescence that you described, um, that's excellent. So it's the um, the the caveat that we're giving everybody with this. This is the the we actually just found out pleasantly enough that Peg gave it told us that we have $12,000 more than we thought we had for the last few days that we've been doing these hearings, which is great. Yes. <laughs> there's there's, there's $161,000 in requests, and we've been functioning under the thought that we only had $80,000 to distribute. Uh, now we find out we have $90,000, so that's, that's a piss up. But the, the fact is, is, of course, you guys know the drill that yep. that and and so in, in in as a result, I mean, doing this for years, my continual frustration is the fact that we know that people use this to leverage other grants, other funds to to get the essential the imprimatur of the of the city saying, yeah, we we we're invested in this, and that with the diminishing returns, it looks like our our support is diminishing, and and then we want to say that that in no way is that the case, and that. I've been trying, and I've been racking my brain about how the hell we can offset that in some level. And, and one of the things that I'm offering, personally as a counselor, is is letters of endorsement for the programs as well. Um, so, if you need it, please 
asking for it, we'd be glad to do that. To something that, you know, as you go further, as you advance your applications for other grants and other things like that, it might help a letter with the city seal from some move. It, yep, that, that definitely is always a great thing to have, and we have been ramping up the grant writing. You know, right, you know we'll take $5,000 where we can find right. it this day and age. And it's, you know, and you hate to say, geez, you know, we're thankful for anything because it's, you know, it, we're always being thankful for, and we're taking less every year. So, um, but, you know, we, you know, every once in a while you get a bright spot and you see, hey, geez, you know, well, you know, the fundraising through, you know, November, December, and January was up. You know, it wasn't up to solve all the financial prep, but it was up to, you know, plug the little hole here and there. And so, you know, at some level, people in the community have um, recognized it. And, uh, you know, Northampton is, in the community here is just um, very supportive of uh, the homeless issues. You know. And it's not so in other communities that they're working so. We are grateful for, you know, the support that we get. And well, we know the communities on our side. Yeah, and that's that's top down. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's yeah, we feel it's it. Good. 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 You're doing a very good job with the shelters. It's the, the dog and pony show is over. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's halfway you actually now. Now the 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 other half. Now we're ready. Okay. Yeah, we'll just shake our heads and then. Okay. Okay. Hello. 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 Everything yeah. uh, went. Thank yeah. God for staff handling the situation as well, and Danielle doing a great job. Did the newspaper have it all wrong? Yeah. Well, not all. No, not all. I mean, prying at the door? And... Nope, that's all true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, um, well, and we worked well with the uh, police, and they were amazing. And, you know, they're right next door, so it's very yeah. helpful. But there was an incident Friday night. Well, I know that. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, but, based on my understanding of this, actually, I, I, uh, I, I don't think it could have been handled any better than it was. Handled. It was Thank you. And it, and it was. It stopped it, yeah. And in, in the buzz, such as it is, and there isn't much buzz, yeah. no offense, but there, <laughs> right. that's a good thing. But, <laughs> uh, but the, the fact is, is everyone seems to recognize that. I mean, yeah. they're, they're um, in, in fact, all the factors that may play into people's personal biases about what shelters represent or offset by the fact that this is a, a thing that was mediated and dealt with uh, humanely and properly, actually, yeah. and, and safely. And I so, think the staff so. handled it very well. Yeah, very well. That's, that's, the, that's, the, yes. that's the sense I'm yeah. getting, So We are thankful uh, for staff because, uh, you know, there are volunteers, there are clients, and staff was able to Diffuse the situation as best they could, so the police got there to keep everyone safe. And you didn't have to worry about a long wait. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, no. Well, actually, yeah. is, is, is there any um, remarkable or any differences this year with interfaith than than last year? Is it? We didn't. I didn't understand. But I didn't realize that um, Carl did laundry there. Yeah. Oh my no idea. Yes, yes. we're looking for a replacement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go from here to another meeting. I got plenty of time. Early, early morning, early yeah. morning. Yeah. Like, but that counselor's right. We never knew that. Yeah. And he's been doing it for how long? He didn't bring it up, I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. For years, since the beginning yeah. of time. He's and been he part of that. And he didn't ask for a replacement. We, we keep trying to put it out there that maybe he needs. Right. Not right. to right. not lug the big bags of laundry around. Now, that he, really he speaks didn't ask for to the collaboration with the friends. When the friends started this interfaith winter shelter, I don't know how many years ago. 1990, right? Grove started in 90. Um, it was about 94, I think, 94. we started okay. the COP program. So nearly yeah. 20 years ago. Um, the laundry, and I don't know if Peg can explain this, is brought from the interfaith to the jail where the jail washes the laundry for us with no charge and then it's brought back to the shelter with, um, with the uh, 
with the volunteer from the Friends during the transportation, and then we have uh, two students a night from Smith College that come down to volunteer during the evening. And um, generally speaking, uh, one of the like main duties the students have is the laundry, which is really going like piece by piece because we can't have any debris going into the jail. Mm -hmm. So um, it just, I mean, that's four different individuals, organizations coming together to make this one particular, just this one aspect of it happen. And yeah. there's just examples of that throughout with the interfaith shows yeah. that. Understanding. Yeah. It, it is. is. Yeah. And it's also the interface, it, it's played an important part during a lot of weather emergencies this year. Mm -hmm. um, with yes. the hurricane, we opened, when it, even when it wasn't open, we opened the doors. Mm -hmm. um, Danielle Wanda did a great job during you know, the hurricane and other weather events when mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't even yeah. prior to you know, it being available. So and Just getting the word on the street, but, you know, yeah. there's sweet shelter during those storms. Mm -hmm. so. but, you know, right. so you've been doing that ahead of the storm? So did that, yeah. uh, <coughs> we prepare. Yeah. 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 Better than most, apparently. Right. Yes, we prepare beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's coming, we just prepare yeah. just in case. Better than the power call. companies, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have somebody that just watches a weather report 24-7. <laughs> oh, that's they, great. They're in the basement. How much they get paid to do it? I know a guy like that who has really boring yeah. yeah. Is that People a new position? Yeah. 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 But, you know, I just, I just want to say the work that the staff does, Danielle and Wanda, is just... You know, they don't know who's coming through the door and what kind of shape any given night. And yeah. They run sh safe shelters, and, you know, this is, I've been here for three and a half years uh, overseeing this, and this is the first really major incident that's been in either of the shelters, mm -hmm. and we tried to figure out when the last one that rose to this level. Well, you got to stop and look at it, too. And it's I mean, long, employees long just don't come walking through the door. You know that for a fact, Jay. Yep. I mean, they need to go through intensive training on different types of behaviors, yep. correct? Yeah, right. You know, and the, the, in working with, you know, the whole, there's no, it's not like working in, you know, in a mental health program or developmentally right. disabled where it's the same folks, you know, what they have, the script is written, right. you know, every day is different. So, you know, I mean, well, if it's any consolation, if you consider any agency or any entity right. or municipal entity, that all, that they all have conflicts of this yeah. nature. The fact that you've had so few, actually, the incidences yeah. so few. I mean, you know, it, it speaks, I think, to the professionalism and the well-managed care that your system provides. You know, Harold's doesn't have your record, so you know they, they probably have. They've, they've had more police calls to Harold's than they've had to the shelter. So, I mean, I think. When you run out of that hot fudge, right? Well, yeah. you know, it's just, you have blood sugar issues, and, you know, it's just no accounting for it. But, you know, and that would be my wife. Oh, no. But I think oh. it's just to the level of this place. Yeah, it's recorded with this. Yeah. I, think it's, I think actually that also speaks to the atmosphere that you create there, because there is a sense of respect that's accorded to you guys there. Um, and as such, I think that that's reflected in the low incidence rates and the fact that this is an anomaly. This is such a big anomaly that, that, that I know that you guys are freaked out about how this plays. So I, I should, I mean, we, we need to look at this in context. Yeah. And the fact that this is an aberration. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> I, actually, when I told Danielle, I said, why were you in the paper? I remember, I said, oh, right. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> well, I want to acknowledge that we're grateful that Wanda remains at least on our advisory yeah. board for the Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. And when things lighten up, we mm -hmm. capture her right back yeah. on the yeah. commission. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Because oh. he's got That was it, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have anything Thank else you, you want to add? Um, you want to throw something else out there? No, <laughs> no, no. no. That, thanks yeah. for having us Thank here. You. And, you know, we appreciate it. We appreciate your work. Absolutely. And that's right. I think we see you coming pretty soon. It's June? June. June. With Susan and... Oh, for uh, SSBA? Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Okay, we'll see you.
Good luck. We'll be coming knocking on your door. So actually, by the way, I, I heard it was supposed to snow. Oh, that's up. Yeah, I heard this weekend. Just a little or what? Well, don't say this weekend. It's St. Patrick's when? Day Parade. I know, I know. I thought I saw something for Saturday, but, you know, it changes. I just was told that. Too. Yeah, I just saw something. But, again, never know. Shoveling <laughs> snow. <laughs> Shoveling <laughs> snow. Yes. Bye. 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 Have a nice Thank holiday. You. Thank you. Yeah, good. Um, are you off? I'm not. I was told I was supposed to record this part. Do you not want me to record this? Part? What well, the deliberation I think discussion? We need to talk the, about that. Yeah. Can you yeah. just shut off for one second? Mm -hmm. Thanks. What do you, what, 